Charlie should do something on that bass. What do you think? Hello everyone, welcome to House of Destiny. This is your boy, Dr. Charlie C.J. Jordan, a.k.a. Charles of the Ritz. Welcome to Perspectives of the Prophetic. I am so blessed and so honored that God has opened this door for me to be able to bring what God has placed upon my heart to each and every one of you. And I pray that this channel is truly, truly blessing each and every one of you as well, okay? So hey, look, let's get right into this word. I don't want to be too long. I've titled this more than you can bear. We've heard this scripture many times that God would not put upon us more than what we can bear. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, what really brought me to this word, I was doing a live interview with Dr. Manuel Johnson. He's a prophet out of Southern California. His church is in Glendale, California, as a matter of fact. And I've ministered with him about four times and he's a powerful, humble, and just a uh, uh, just a very cool man of God, man. I just, I just love his spirit, man. We have a good time each and every time we minister together. And I was on his broadcast and at the end of the broadcast, he asked me this question. He said, Charlie, what is it that God is saying through you? Okay. And to you in the times that we are in right now. And the first thing that came to my mind, everyone was the prophetic utterance that, uh, uh, the prophetic utterances that God brought, uh, uh forth through prophet Kim Clement. The words that God told me to meditate on day and night, to read, to pray, to release on a daily basis. And that's what I've been doing since about mid-2017, maybe even earlier. But I've been doing that. And I was about to say, well, which one of these can I speak about? And then God quickened me very quickly and very beautifully. He said, Charlie, just tell my people, tell him that this is what I've been saying through you and to you for all of these years. And that is to trust me. So I said, God is just saying, trust him. Seek him. Seek his face now more than what you have in the past. Because he wants us to know exactly what it is that we are here to do, where we should do it, when we should do it, how to advance the kingdom, and, 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 and just to walk in the fullness of why and what we were sent here to do. That's what God wants us to do. And so that's what I released. And then so the next day I was in my time of prayer and I was thinking about this. And that's when the quote came up. God, you haven't placed upon me. You haven't placed upon your people more than what we can bear. And then so I started asking the question. I, I started thinking about this. And I know that this was the spirit that led me down this path. I asked this question. I said, how can we find out what we can or cannot do? And how much we can bear of this that God has placed upon us. What does it mean and how can it be applied to our lives? So I began to think and meditate on this. And that's when he took me to this scripture, everyone, where we actually find this quote. And it's written slightly different in scripture. Let's go to it. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. Check this out. Listen to it. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So in scripture, it's worded a little bit different than God would not place upon us more than what we can bear. That's what it means. But in scripture here, it's written a little different and it has a very powerful meaning. It's what God showed me. And that's why I wanted to bring this word to you, because, guys, this is what we need to know. You see, I begin to look up that word temptation. I said, hmm, temptation. I never thought that in, in this quote, God would not give unto us more than what we can bear. I always used to think that it had everything to do with what God has placed us here to do. And it does. It has a lot to do with this. But God is also saying 
the burden of man. He will not allow the burdens of man, the burdens of this world, the temptations that comes with this world to overtake us, to have more heaped up on us than what we are able to bear. Man, this brought such joy when I saw this. I looked up that word temptation, the Greek word, and I went to the root meaning where they get the word temptation from. I'm not going to try to quote the Greek word because I will butcher it. But this is what it says and what it means. To try whether a thing can be done or attempted or to endeavor to do the thing that can be done. I looked up that word endeavor. You know what it means? It means to try hard to make something happen. In God's word, it is clear that God's burden is light and his yoke is easy. The things that God has for you and I to do is easy and is light. It's not hard to do. And that's when it began to, sh that's when this scripture began to light up in my spirit. God is talking about when he says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. The temptation that God is speaking about here is the temptation of man, or let's put it in these words, the burden of man. You see, because I looked up that word tempt, uh, uh, the, uh, as common to man, and basically that is saying that that man expects you to do. That you must measure up to man's expectations of what it is that he wants you to do or what it is that you think or that you are called to do. I'm not going to say think that you are called to do. Okay. Man is going to put a burden up on you to say, uh, uh, no, you have to reach this plateau. You have to get, you have to come here and you have to try very hard. You're going to have to please me. Let me tell you something. You can never please man. You can never please man. Okay. Because his burdens is definitely not light, but it is very, very hard. But this is what God said in this scripture about this temptation. He says, but God is faithful who will not allow you to fall into the trap of this temptation to the point to where you won't be able to escape. God says, look, we have to deal with the burdens of man. We have to deal with the burdens of this world, with the circumstances and the situations that happens in this world. This is something that we have to deal with. But God has given us his word, the tools, everything we need to slide through the cares of this world so that the cares of this world will not be able to stop you from doing what he sent you here to do or sent us here to do. So God will not allow it to get to a point to where you can't handle it and that you can't escape it, but you will be able to bear it. Okay. But now God says, look, I know what you have need of. The problem is you need to know what it is that I have need of. You see, now when we begin to tap in and find out what it is that God has for us to do, then the burden of man will become a very distant second, third, fourth, all the way back down to the pit, everybody. It will not be able to have authority or have a stronghold in your life. It can't because now you have tapped into the precept, the will, and the purposes of God for your life. God already knows what we have need of. You see, we find this in Matthew. Chapter 6, verses 31 through 33, Jesus said this. This is what he said. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Or in other words, don't worry about the cares of the world. Don't worry about man's expectation of what he expects you to do. Don't measure up to the measurement of man. Don't try to please man, for in pleasing man, you are, you are trapped within the fear of man, and that's where you will be snared. But if you trust in God, now you are safe, because now you are in the confounds of the kingdom of Almighty God, where there is total safety. Let me continue with the scripture. 
For after all of these things, the Gentile seeks. The unbeliever is concerned about worldly things. They are trapped by worldly things. They trust in worldly things. But God is saying, for your heavenly father knows that you need all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. God already knows what we have need of here. He will provide everything that you have need of. Here's what this scripture means, what God is saying through me about, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his righteousness. All these things shall be added to you. What things? The things of the kingdom of God. That is what we need to know. That is what we need to understand and discover those things that he has for each and every one of us. He said, when you do these things, then you will be, be able to advance the kingdom the way it needs to be advanced. God already knows what we have need of. What we need to know is what it is that he had need, you know, has a need of. Okay. Now, the religious would say, are you saying that God, God has needs? Yes, he has a need. He has a need for you and I to be exactly where we need to be at the appointed time. For he called you to that place. He needs us to say exactly what it is that he needs, that he wants to be said at that appointed time. Just like when Jesus came to John the Baptist in the, in the Jordan River. And John the Baptist tried to say, no, I, I shouldn't baptize you. No, 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 no. You need to baptize me. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. You must do this for all righteousness must be fulfilled. It was important that Jesus was baptized by who? Not by anyone else other than John the Baptist. All righteousness had to be fulfilled. This is how God wants us to walk, everyone. So this is what God revealed to me. When we don't seek him to know what it is that we are here to do, when we are strongly convinced and controlled by the burden of man, by the temptation of man, okay, we fall into that very temptation to do what you weren't sent here to do, to do what you are not anointed to do, okay? So God is telling us, don't fall into that. But if you do, there is a way out. There's a way out of this. So that's when, whenever we don't allow God to take what it is that he has sent us here to do, our giftings, the things that he gifted us to do, we will fall into the clutches of Satan. And our giftings, our natural giftings, Satan would take it, he would distort it, okay? He would twist it up, and he would use it for the sake of the kingdom of darkness. God says, no, I did not send you here with the gifts that I sent with you to be used by Satan. That's why it's so important that we have to seek God. We have to know exactly what it is that God wants. We have to trust God. We have to know that God is going to do all and exceedingly, abundantly above all than we can imagine or think. We have to know this. This is something that we have to know. Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six says this about trusting in God. Very beautiful scripture. You've heard it many times, many times. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, Acknowledge him for he and he shall direct your paths. So when we trust in God in this way and we don't lean on our own understanding, we don't lean on the things and the cares of this world, our own carnal nature. Well, then we will be able to acknowledge him in all things in every area of our lives. And then our paths will be directed 
by him. You see, temptation is going to come. But know that God has already, he's already provided, predestined, and gifted you with all that you need to complete the race, to complete the journey. So just seek him and he will show you what you are able to do. And here's what's beautiful about this. When man heap up on you and try to heap up on you more than what is than what you are here to do, okay? When man's opinion, he says, oh, no, you're not gifted to do this. Oh, you're not good enough. Man, this person is better than you at this, and, and you're not so good at that. You know, in other words, man started spitting his evaluation of who you are and how valuable you are or how talented you are or what it is that you are sent here to do or what it is that you are capable of doing. When man starts spitting that opinion at you, you will be able to look at that, listen to that and say, "Uh, uh-uh, I'm not going to receive it. I'm not going to receive what you're saying. And you are not my motivation. You are not the one that um, governs over me. And my approval is not set on you. In other words, I'm trying to find the word. I can't, I cannot find the word, but you know what I'm saying here. You know exactly what I'm saying. In other words, I am not to be controlled by you. Your expectations of me means nothing. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter. Yes, we can do all things in Christ because he gives us the strength. But what are all of those things? The things that God has allotted and gifted you, predestined you to do. No more and no less. So God, on the flip side, is not going to give to you something that you are not able to do. He's not going to give you no more, but more importantly, he's not going to give you no less. He's going to give all that he has allotted for you to walk in. This is what God wants us to discover, everyone. So I want you guys to receive this word, okay? I want you guys to really know that God has positioned each and every last one of us very strategically, okay, to be, to do, and to accomplish everything that his kingdom has sent us here to do. It's a beautiful thing, everyone. It's a beautiful thing. So I really pray that this word has been a blessing to you. Because I know that God placed this word upon my heart to release to you. Because he wants you and I, he wants all of us to truly, truly know why we are here. What it is that we are gifted. And what it is gifted with. And what it is that we were sent here to do. And let me tell you something. God spoke to me at the beginning of this year of 2023. And he said that every gifting and calling and election is going to have an acceleration in our lives. And what that means, everyone, is that the one that comes into the kingdom, like if someone, uh, uh, anyone that's calling on the name of the Lord right now, if you call on the name of the Lord right now and you get saved, born again, washed in the blood, well, this that God has sent that individual or you here to do, all right, it's going to accelerate. You are going to accelerate and pick up the gifting and walk in the fullness of that gifting that God has sent you here to do. There's an acceleration that is taking place and it's going to continue, everyone. That's what's so beautiful about this. And so that's why God wanted me to release this word. So I want everyone to sow a seed now. If this word has been a blessing, if this word has been a blessing to each and every one of you or to any of you, Information is scrolling along the bottom of the screen on how to give. You know how Kim used to speak to about $5 in your face? Sew something. If you don't have any, if you don't have anything, sew a button off your shirt. Okay? But sow a seed into this word and tap into it and become all that God has truly called and sent you here to become. Truly do all that God has sent you here to do. Okay? Because you have been sent here to do something marvelous and something wonderful, okay? So let me pray over the offering right now. Father God, we just thank you for you. We thank you for 
this time that you have saved us for. And Father God, you placed us in this time, in this future. And you said that we will look good in the midst of all of this that's going on. And yes, it is ugly, but we look good. And so Father God, I thank you right now that those that shall give and that are given and that will give, that Father God, you will pour out upon them a double portion in the return of this that they have given. And that, Father God, they will step into the fullness of what you have sent them here to do. Father God, we receive this now. In the precious name of your glorious son, Yahshua, we receive it in his name. Amen and amen. So there you go, everyone. I hope this has really been a blessing to you. Know this, that you are truly somewhere in the future. And you look so much better than all of this that's going on around us. And when J-E-S-U-S is in effect, Jesus is truly by our side. You and I, we put that devil in check. See you guys next time. Peace.